So let's bring in former governor of Arkansas, Mike Huckabee, to help us break it all down. Good morning. I think we can still say happy Thanksgiving. Happy weekend to you, Governor. Well, thank you, Will. Good to be with you, Rachel and Pete. And uh, yeah, I think we can still say happy Thanksgiving because there's still leftover turkey in the refrigerator sure is. and probably will be for the next two weeks. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, I'd love to ask you about this. It seems as we were discussing on the couch this morning, it just seems such an obvious ploy, an obvious uh, duping of the American public, the continuation of that's so racist. Because here we have Joe Biden today limiting travel from Africa when just not even one year ago, um, yeah, no, a little more than a year ago, a little over yep. a year ago, he tweeted the following when it came to President Trump's travel bans. He said the following, Governor, he said, we're in the midst of a crisis with the coronavirus. We need to lead the way with science, not Donald Trump's record of hysteria, xenophobia and fear mongering. He's the worst possible person to lead us through this global health emergency. But just to get a little more specific, he also said this about an African travel ban. He said this diminishes us in the world's eyes. The new African ban is designed to make it harder for black and brown people to immigrate to the U.S. It's a disgrace and we cannot let him succeed. So a little over a year now, Governor, and he does the exact same thing, implements the exact same policy. Yeah, I think it's pretty evident that uh, Joe Biden's tweet hasn't aged well. But then again, Will, neither has Joe Biden. He hasn't <laughs> aged well either. So it's pretty consistent. I, I find it really interesting that uh, what just he said a year or so ago was that, uh, you know, it was xenophobic and racist. So I guess we now have it confirmed. Joe Biden, by his own definition, is xenophobic and racist and engaging in hysteria right. and fear mongering. So there you have it. We've traded a good president who was getting our economy mm. going for one that doesn't know which way he's going and changes his mind every other day. You know, uh, it, it really is a disaster. Do you know who is aging well? You. You look better than I've ever seen you. This Sean Connery look, you look so handsome. I'm not kidding. Oh, I'm not kidding, full, Governor. They took him full screen upon your yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. That is a good look for you. Don't Rachel, change it. Rachel, I'm going to tell you something. I am going to get a video of what you just said. <laughs> And I'm going to send it out to the world and tell them, I don't care what you guys think. Rachel Duffy thinks I'm cool. And, gee, you no, just made cool. my day. I, I sure handsome. hope. Well, I want you to know that I hope your book stays number one for the next 300 weeks. Thank you, Governor. Well, listen, I want to move to this. You brought up uh, Donald Trump. He was actually, the, the former president was actually on Varney last na night. Um, he was with David Asman. And he says that if he run, w runs in the next election, he thinks he's going to win. Take a listen. Do you think there will be an open primary for the, the Republican nomination in 2024? I think if I run, I'll get it. Look, I, I have a 94, 95 percent, even in the CPAC, I had a 98 percent approval rating. So I think if I decide to run, I'll get it very easily. And most people have said that if I run, they won't run against me. So I think that's good. What do you think, Governor? If he runs, will anyone run against him? Uh, you know, there'll be a few people who will, but a lot of people will clear the field. Some of the names that maybe we've most heard, they'll say, you know what, I'm going to step back. Donald Trump was actually the president. He wasn't just the nominee. Typically, if a person is the nominee and they run again, even if they didn't win before, everybody kind of steps back and gives them a shot. But in this case, it's going to be that uh, he was actually president. So if he gets in it, I think uh, the primary is pretty much over. Uh, the fact is, every day Joe Biden is president, the presidency of Donald Trump is a great reminder of why we ought to be incredibly regretful and disappointed that he didn't get his second term. You know, Governor, a lot of people don't understand why 95% uh, of Republicans, or whatever the exact number is, are uh, lockstep in their support. For those, who, for those who don't understand the base, and you do, uh, you're in touch with Republicans all the time. Yeah, your, your daughter's running in Arkansas. What is it about what Donald Trump accomplished uh, that have so many Republicans continuing to gravitate to him? Well, first of all, he put America first. That overarches everything else he did. He brought manufacturing back. 
He stood tall against the uh, weak sense of NATO and the European countries not paying their own way and got them to pay up and made NATO stronger than it's ever been. He helped bring a real sense of peace and direction in the Middle East that had never been done because he did it differently. He built the economy back by bringing manufacturing back, standing up against China and their trade cheating and their many lies. Uh, he wasn't totally captured and owned by the Washington elite. He didn't need them. He didn't want them. And that's why they hated him so much. A lot of Americans will never understand the reason Donald Trump was hated by the media and the insiders of Washington was because he was never part of their club and didn't play their games. Mm -hmm. But when it came to deregulating business, understanding agriculture, recognizing that farmers needed the freedom to farm, bringing energy independence, the list goes on. Uh, you know, he had some mean tweets. And some people didn't like some of the things that he would say. But my gosh, he did the job that we mm -hmm. sent him there to do. And ultimately, uh, he's a doctor, maybe with not the greatest bedside manner and the most sympathetic <laughs> person to sit on the side of your bed and talk to you about your surgery. But in the OR, uh, his skillful hands did the job and saved your life. And that's what you ultimately appreciated. Hey, Governor, I'd love to follow up with something you said. Um, the question then becomes, if the Republican field clears out for Donald Trump, who does he run against? And I don't want to get ahead of ourselves and start talking about 2024 too much, but you brought up an interesting point about, about sort of the, the internal dynamics of who allows who to run and who steps aside. The Democratic side is fascinating. Joe Biden says, and there's people within his camp, that he'll run in 2024, but assuming he can't or won't, I don't, Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, they're in a real odd situation of, who is the inheritor of the Democratic Party should Joe Biden not be able to run? Well, it, it might as well be Bernie Sanders. It's his ideology that's running the Democrat Party. <laughs> And a close second is Elizabeth Warren. So I guess it's a Sanders-Warren ticket. And even if they're not the actual names on it, it's their ideologies that are driving and directing uh, the new far-left Democrat Party. JFK couldn't be a, a Democrat today. He was pro-life. He was pro-defense. He was anti-communist. Uh, he was a, a guy that believed in slashing taxes and freeing up business. Uh, he wouldn't recognize the party that he was a part of in 1960. I, I mean, I think we just have to look at the fact that the Democrats have essentially given themselves over to the most radical people in the country, not the most radical in the Democrat Party, the most radical people in the country, the people that back in the 60s were considered virtual, uh, you know, just anti-American kooks. And that's who they're following. It's, it's truly stunning because I remember when Democrats were fairly rational people. They had good ideas sometimes, and they were reasonable. Uh, they were a little left of most of us Republicans. Uh, but you could sit down and have a conversation, compromise, get some things done, move things forward. Not these guys. Uh, it's an all or nothing, now or never possibility. And when you have that attitude in politics, you usually get nothing and you get it forever. And that's why we need some, uh, as they say, real adult leadership back in Washington. Well, Governor, one of the things they want to change, and it's, it's the reason is their, their climate agenda or religion, however you want to uh, identify it, they want to change the Thanksgiving table. Um, the Washington Post said that Thanksgiving, you know, what's on the table in a hotter, drier world? This was their, their headline here, and they are suggesting that maybe we want to switch from turkey to wild boar to kelp salad, crickets, and, or your pie crust. These are just a few of the things that may end up on the Thanksgiving menu as climate change takes its toll on the planet. What do you make of that? Well, I, I've got a word for the Washington Post. I'll do that over my dead turkey. There's no <laughs> way that I'm going to eat crickets in my pie and lab-grown turkey. I still got a shotgun. I can go out in the woods and get a turkey it, during season, of course. Uh, but this is nonsense. Uh, these kind of people who are such alarmist, I hope they enjoy their cricket pie and their lab-grown tofu turkey. But for most of us in America, uh, we're going to continue the traditions that we have loved and lived by and want to pass on to our families. And I know that's an anathema to some of those folks over at the Washington Post. Uh, but when I'm out duck hunting, deer hunting, turkey hunting, I'm just going to remember that I'll be putting stuff in my freezer 
and they're going to be going to the lab and seeing what they can create and have <laughs> Frank Gross. and meat. Yeah. No thank you. No thank we you. Had to I want to hear that turkey call, by the way. Sorry to interrupt you. I, I want to hear the governor's <laughs> turkey call. He won't got to have a, a, an apparatus. Right? He's got to have yeah. a thing. Or his duck call. It, or a duck call. I want to hear one of those calls yeah. on a future. <laughs> I think we should. I think we, I think we could do that. Uh, but we had to check and make sure it wasn't a joke. This yeah, we did. We actually were yes. like telling can our we double yes. check. But if you had to pick one of these, Governor, which one would you pick? Because the future's coming. I mean, the new Thanksgiving is coming. Here, the, here's the changes. Here's what might be on the menu. Swapping birds for swine is one possibility. Turkeys of the future could come from a lab instead. So pumpkin pie uh, swapped for prickly pear. Crickets in your crust. You could trade your uh, bubbly for beer made with what is Kernza? that? I don't, know, I, I, that I don't is. know if you know what Kernza is, Governor, but any of those sound good to you? Never heard of Kernza. Don't want to know about it. I'll tell you, <laughs> at that point, I go on a hunger strike. <laughs> It'll be the first Thanksgiving that I will be on a complete total fast. Why the heck not? These people are loons. Yeah. Absolute loons. I feel sorry for them, but you know what? It just means there's more for the rest of us mm -hmm. who still love our country, love our traditions, and love eating the food that good Lord above gave us. That's how we ought to be enjoying life, is that he has given us plenty of things, both meat and protein, as well as plants. We ought to enjoy them, take care of them, preserve them, pass them on. That's good uh, conservation. Mm -hmm. But I'm not an environmentalist. I don't worship the environment. I enjoy it, and I want to take good care of it and make sure that my grandchildren enjoy it as well. Amen to that. Well said. Yep, and there'll be no passing of the cricket pie. Although maybe yeah. tomorrow we'll try some on the, if we can get some on set. Let's try some cricket pie. Or crinza. Or crinza. Or crinza. Prickly yep. pear pie, maybe. Maybe. Oh. maybe. Well, Governor, uh, I, you, I agree. You, Sean Connery. Sean Connery, like, I'm maybe, telling you. Keep uh, the with look. a little Santa Claus in there. No, I'm you know? I, it's a full Sean Connery. Don't, full don't Sean listen Connery? to Pete. Well, don't listen to Pete. As long as you understand. Just understand this, a lot of this was because I figured under the Biden economy, I might have to moonlight as a department store Santa <laughs> this year, so I wanted to get an early start. So that's the purpose of the beard. Wow. Looking You're the good. best looking Santa I've ever seen. Looking so good. thank looking you, good. Governor. <laughs> Governor, thank you All so right. much. Rachel, Appreciate I love you. Take care. <laughs> that was very specific. <laughs>